This portion of the news is brought to you by Sun Oil Limited, fueling growth for people. Welcome back to the Bahamas Tonight Weekend. The Member of Parliament for Long Island, Loretta Butler-Turner, took the government to task over its 2013-2014 budget. While she says the budget has a few meaningful ideas to spur jobs and growth overall, the opposition member feels it represents a stunning lack of vision and planning. The introduction of the new customs processing fee for all imports brought into the Bahamas. Um, the government expects that it will raise some $20 million dollars in revenue from the imposition of this fee. This will impact, without question, Mr. Speaker, the cost of living in our country, without doubt. And business license fees are being increased. Who does the government believe will bear this additional cost? Once again, it will be us, the consumers, Mr. Speaker. The increased bank taxes. I have no problems with banks being taxed. They make a lot of money. But once again, those increases, Mr. Speaker, will also be passed on to consumers. And so if we're talking about actually growing the economy to have additional um, burden placed on the backs of consumers, I don't see where that is going to happen in the, in the short term or the medium term. Mrs. Butler-Turner also highlighted infrastructural needs of her constituency, including a centrally located airport, potable water, health and sporting facilities, and acts that Crown land be granted to residents. With a downturn in the economy, she questioned the government's intent and noted the action taken by the former administration. In the 2010-11 budget, the FNM reduced salaries for parliamentarians, leading Mr. Speaker, as I said in here before, by example. The salary of the Prime Minister was reduced by 10%, and those of parliamentarians in both the House of the Assembly and the Senate reduced by 5%. The duty allowances of the Prime Minister and ministers were reduced by 50%. Meantime, as the country celebrates its 40th independence and on the eve of Father's Day, members of the Mount Tabor Full Gospel Baptist Church honored 40 stalwart Bahamian men who not only are hailed as outstanding fathers, but men who have made significant contributions to the development of the country. They call themselves the Fabulous 40, exemplary men who have not only made sacrifices for their families, but who have impacted the lives of hundreds of young Bohemian men in their communities. A few of the honorees say they are thrilled to be recognized in such a special way and are hopeful that their accomplishments as good fathers are something others would emulate. I'm elated because the, the highest honor that can any ever be paid to a father is to be called a good father by his spouse, by his children and then the community. It doesn't get better than this. I told Bishop Ellis um, earlier tonight that he has outdone himself. I understand that there were some 160 plus nominees and to be selected as one of the fabulous 40 tonight is, it, it just bugs my mind. My father is here, former overseer of the Turks and Caicos Islands for the Church of God of Prophecy. Um, I've got my siblings are here. The thing that we, we all recognize is the fact that we need good, fathers to make this a good nation and if I could be an example or considered an example it means I've done something along the way that make people believe that I've tried my best and so I feel good about that and I feel proud to be in with this group. Prime Minister the Right Honorable Perry Christie, a father of three, applauded the honorees for their contributions to nation building. He notes the important role a father plays and what it means to be compassionate. A strong father has respect for the mother of his children. When a man treats his wife as his equal, shows his children that her contributions are as important, values her input, input and opinions, he helps to raise better children. Being good fathers require that we have compassion. Compassion is the key to our humanity. We must in all things be compassionate men. Senior pastor of Montebor Full Gospel Baptist Church, Bishop Neil Ellis, says the selection process revealed that there are thousands of other good Bahamian fathers who are doing great things in the country and are yet to be recognized for their work. Over the last 10 weeks, the process of identifying these 40 has caused us to become further convinced that there are still a whole lot of good men who have made and are continuing to make tremendous
greatest contribution to the upbuilding of our country and who are even more importantly great stewards of their God-given assignment, fatherhood. Our very own chief meteorologist Basil Dean was among the top 40 fathers honored to mark the country's 40th independence. Members of the Urban Renewal Commission paying tribute to a number of fathers today during their special Father's Day luncheon at the St. Joseph's Catholic Church on Boyd Road. With its theme of Father's Blessing, dozens of fathers from various Urban Renewal offices, offices rather, turned out for a day of fun and entertainment by the Urban Renewal Pop Band. Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Works and Urban Development, the Honorable Philip Davis, encouraged the men to form a father's movement that will help to advance the cause for manhood. So over to inquest, we have Arthur Hanna. If we were to take a leaf out of their lives and see how they were manning up as they journey through their life in building our nation, by sacrificing themselves and sometimes some of their family life, so that all of us could be a little better off in our lifetime. If we take a leaf out of that, out of their life book, look at a chapter in their book, maybe and use that as part of the mantra for this new movement that I'm challenging you all to try to become a part of. And as the countdown continues to the 40th independence anniversary, the Bahamian flag is making its journey around the Bahama Islands. Residents in Eleuthera turned out at the Governor's Harbor Airport yesterday for the historic arrival. The Bahamian flag was hoisted during a cool Eleuthera breeze in observance of the country's special anniversary. From Eleuthera, the flag will continue its journey next week to another family island. And that does it for this portion of the news, but don't go anywhere just yet. Sports is up next with Julian Gibson.